Okay, this movie is to show you how to uh, basically set up a Festo drive out of the box using our Festo configuration tool software. First thing you need to do is go to the website to download the software for your controller. So you type in, you, you select these devices right here, your Americas, Canada or US, hit the go button, click on support downloads, that's where all your technical and software is. Type in your controller name, hit the enter button to find. At this point you click on the engineering software tab and look for the Festo configuration tool for your drive. Okay? So this one here, you download this right here like this, hit save. Save, place it. No, you've got the software. You double click the exe file and you install the software. I'm not going to show you that. It's not part of this training here. The next step is to start up the software. So when you first start up the software, unlike mine, you'll have no projects here. And this is what the software is going to look like. You'll simply click on new project, give it a name. Put in an author, hit the OK. You could have many different plugins here. In this case, we're using the CMMSST. Give the controller an access name or component name. I'll just call it Access 1. Uh, there's different versions, it always defaults to the latest. I didn't install the newer version, so it'll default to whichever my latest is. Hit the OK button, and at that moment, it creates a shell. Okay? With our controllers, all of our controllers are multifunction when it comes to field buses. So, on top of configuring what hardware you have connected to the system, you also need to um, configure what field bus you're using. So, that's the main purpose for this software here. Um, Next thing you do is you create a new drive configuration. Click on that. Select the controller type. You either got the old one or the new one. Select the voltage, which is what is being controlled for the load. Very important you don't select the lower voltage and wire the higher voltage. You could damage the unit. Hit the next button. You want to connect to a Festa motor with axis. In this case, again, you need to know the hardware and what is connected to your system. So in, in my case, I have a size 42S motor and I have a um, okay. the S stands for uh, The uh, turbo encoder, B for the brake. I don't have any gearbox, so I'm going to hit the next button. I'll select the linear axis this time around. As you can see, tooth belt size 50, the stroke uh, 400. This is the final result of what you've configured. If you have a gearbox, you would select it here to the gearbox ratio, and it's 5 to 1. Hit the next button. This is what I've just configured here. You verify it and hit the finish button. At this point, you have a shell. Okay. Now, to get through the project, I'm just going to lower this bottom here and get rid of it for now. If you want it back, you simply go down to project output and it comes back. Again, I'll close it. 
Now, from this point, the simplest thing for a new user is to use the next and previous buttons up here. So I'm going to hit the next button. This particular project we're using is going to be can open. I select can open. Um, hit the next button. Specify horizontal or vertical load. Inverse rotation. Extremely important to put the right load in here as this will affect your tuning because the tuning is based on this load size. So for me, I have little or no load at all. I'm going to leave it as this for the sake of continuing on. And I'll leave it as a horizontal. The next button, target reached. There's your tolerance of your axis, tolerance of your following area that you want. Uh, these ones over here you can practically leave alone. This here is a default page. Nothing to worry about there or there. Limit switches. So the limit switches that are used for over travels can also be used for homing. Either way you have to specify whether you've normally open or normally closed. If you don't like the max uh, velocity acceleration that's going to be used as a default in the project, then you can modify these by clicking on the enable editing. These decelerations right here, um, it's important for your project that you specify these properties so you don't mechanically hurt your system. So either lower or raise them depending on what you were trying to do. And I'll go back to defaults and disable editing. The next button, homing method, extremely important that you figure out what you want. Your Again, the limit switch is based on the over travel. Block is when it homes against a physical obstruction and uses the force or the amount of torque at the default and then it calls that zero. Actual position just means that it homes where it stands. Um, limit switch with zero pulse means that it'll use the over travel, either the negative or positive that you specify here, and then move forward from that point based on one revolution, the index pulse on the encoder. Same thing with the block, it'll home to the torque and then move away and then find the index pulse on the encoder and call that zero. And this one here is something that's not very widely used. It'll just home on the index pulse itself. In my case, I'm just going to click actual position, hit the next button. These are your software limits. These are what, you know, the physical stroke of your axis. Usually the defaults are pretty good. The next button, the closed loop. When you're finished putting your load in, as previously discussed, you hit the calculate button. It calculates the gains automatically for you based on your load. For can open, you don't need to specify these here because you're not using these bits. Um, it is important for IO control to note that these here will be determined based on the mode you're in. You can scroll through these to show you what the mode of operation means. Again, for can open, we don't need that. The only things we need are the digital input 4 and 5 so that we have uh, power, the end stage enable and the controller enable. And you also need digital input 13 for the stop on this controller. You need 24 volts to these inputs in order to get power and have the, uh, the end stage enable and active. The next button, go to the fuel bus settings now. So the default is FHPP. If you're using some proprietary thing or third party thing, you can use the 402 standard. But the most common one is FHPP. When you're using FHPP, you want to use the factor group. This takes the user defined units in the controller and converts them to a meaningful number, which is in this case millimeters. So by specifying minus two on all things here, that means that we're going to be sending whole numbers as our target position if we're using that. And if you send a, you know, a 1,000, that means 10.00 as far as the scaling factor goes. When you're in direct mode and you're controlling over the field bus, the base value velocity is based upon a 0 to 100% value. So 0 to 100% of this value would be your velocity. And then your cell and B cell are both at, at these, at these are constants. Hit the next button. This is jog mode. Uh, usually the defaults are good, you can slow them down. This says, you know, I'm going to move at 13 millimeters per second, and then two seconds later, if I'm still holding the button down, I'm going to ramp up over here. 
to this new velocity with this Excel and so. The next button, if you're going to use record modes, populate this with some information. These are absolute moves. You now let's turn the dynamic help on if you don't know what these mean. So wherever you click, come over here. The dynamic help change for the pages. I go back to here. So A stands for absolute positioning. Um, profile, you have seven profiles in this particular controller, which specify the velocity, Excel, D cell, and the rest of the parameters here. So if you select 0 for this one and 1 for this one, when you call move 2, it will use these parameters. When you call move 1, because it's 0, it will use these parameters. That's simple. This is, I'm going to turn the help back off just for clarity here. The error management, it's important that you go through these here and you figure out what your limits are and how you want the reaction. These power stage off, fixed stop, warn. Again, the dynamic help explains to you what these are. Um, again, on the previous tab, power stage off, quick stop, we had configured, where is it here? And uh, where is it? General limitations right here. Okay, sorry. So the quick stop, the stop input limit switch. That's basically what the quick stop does right here. Power stage off simply turns the axis off and it goes into a coast. Warn does nothing except for give you a warning message. The trace configuration is for debugging and stuff like that and tuning. And once you've configured all of that, the next or the last step is to configure the online interface. So that is the means to connect from this software to the controller and download the offline project that you have already made. Another point is that you have a measurements tab here and you can specify whether you want metric or inch. Same thing with revolution 3D, it depends on your axis whether you're linear. FCT interface, select your COM port. If there's no COM ports here, then you didn't have a COM port when you started the software. Shut the software off, get the COM port connected Start the software back up. It only looks when you start up the software. In my case, I'm going to use COM1. The bit rate's not very important. It'll, it'll auto negotiate. Hit the OK button. Hit the Save button. At this point, you're ready to go online. You simply click this button here, and you should be able to go online. connecting the controller here. So if I go online, I click the button, and I've got a project. So at this point I can synchronize, I can do a download, or I do an upload. Because I already have a project in the controller and this was only for sample, I'm simply going to upload the project. Okay, now you're online, green lights. Now when you're online, you have the project output window. You have the tabs at the bottom here. tells you the status of the digital I.O. state, additional status, if you target actual position, things like that. Uh, this whole bottom area here is all used for commissioning. Uh, make sure that the memory card is turned off if you don't have one inserted. In order to take control with the FCP software for commissioning and testing purposes, because you want to get this working first before you start calling over the field bus, you turn the FCP on. That takes the sovereignty away from the PLC, and now this software has the control. And if you have the signals over here proper, when you turn the enable on, the power stage will become active, and the stepper drive is now, uh, you know, servo wing, or it's in a closed loop system right now. At this point, I can do a manual move and jog it by pressing and holding the button, jog it back way, but I have no single step. 
and I have no other options other than dock, and that's because we haven't homed it yet. So when you're online, hit the homing button. This right here will execute whatever this routine here is assigned. So right now we're at 40. I'm going to hit the home button. It's now successful. It's called that zero position, and now we have established a zero. You're always going to have to home the axis with a stepper because it just has an incremental encoder. Now that we have established a homing, a homing valid is there. Now we have single steps. So this right here is relative move information. So if I specify 10 millimeter move at that velocity, if I hit this button right here one time, it moves 10 millimeters. If I hit it again, it moves another 10 millimeters, so on and so forth. If you want to execute records, then you have to populate the records. If I didn't populate the records, I thought I did with that this last project. This is the online project. Okay, so one. So download. Yes, yes. Last point is that you need to store the device. If you don't store it, then when you cycle power, the project settings that you've downloaded will be lost. So I'm enable back on. Now I have controller records in there, and I can come here because I'm online and enabled. If I turn the enable off, this goes gray because it's not executable because we don't have the power stage anymore. Turn the power stage back on, and I can execute the move. So the target was 40, it moved to 40. Execute this one here, it executes that one there. And that's it for commissioning. Nothing else to really think about. You want to cyclically go through, you can add this, add that, say cyclical, and it will move back and forth over the serial port. It's not as fast as what happened during normal things, but that's the way it works. Stop the sequence. Optimize is used if you have some third party. Uh, access setup and you have to manually tune it. The online help, the dynamic help is right here as I always showed you. The specific help for your controller is always available right here. Um, the most common thing is error handling, so errors and warnings are all right here. That helps you troubleshoot your, your controller wiring, things like that, and there's other areas here that show you uh, about the FCT and how to work with it in general. And that's it for today's